This episode is brought to you by Adept Advanced Technologies. We bring the future technology to you. I'm good. How are you doing, ghost lady? I'm great. I'm standing out here. Why? I'm so excited. Ah, uh, don't fan out. Make cheese a real celebrity. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, okay. Eh? okay. Make cheese a real no, celebrity. Hello, after, after watching your interview, I was I thought I was like, yo, Mara, Sebi sounds like Kari, you know, you are like the 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 G of this game, hey, of this radio game. <laughs> ah, to to a certain degree, we, we're there, we're there, but uh, you never get it to your head, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I look up to you yeah. too. Thank you, thank you very much. So what? We never see ghost lady. Yeah, yeah, she's a ghost. Never, oh, never, shit. never. You just hear yeah. her. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Uh, Hinda, Marimini, welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill. And today we've got a special guest. Please welcome DJ Sabi. Flames, <laughs> baby. Flames. Uh, you I, think- I, I drinks aloud. I drinks aloud. Hell yeah. Fuck, if only you could oh. share, bro. <laughs> Ish, man. I wish. I wish. I wish. Want a sip? Hey, dude. Hey, you're becoming a regular yes. on the show, I see, eh? You know, but we definitely have to do something. So if this is a start, let's go. All right. Uh, let's start off by ha- saying happy Mother's Day to Ghost Lady. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe also you gentlemen are deputy mothers, ne? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll run with it. I'll run with it. Yes. You know, so yeah. Yeah. You deserve a, a little portion, you know? How was yes. your day, Ghost Lady? Uh, did you do anything special? Did you get anything special? I've uh, had all the specialness of doing nothing, basically. So today, I don't touch nothing. I sit and just let myself be served. What did your husband get you? Oh, slippers. It's okay. Yay, slippers. Slippers are are excellent. You know, Mother's Day, you 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 approve those gifts that are just, you know, convenient, you know. They're just for comfort. But I heard, I don't know if it applies in your, in your uh, uh, tradition, but if you get something like, someone like slippers or shoes, it means they're going to walk away soon or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, he put a ring on it. <laughs> you ain't going no way. <laughs> what about you, Sabi? What did you do for your baby mama? Ah, man, she literally just uh, used my card a lot. We literally just came back from the mall. Uh, so she just bought a couple of things. Yeah, and I just stood there and allowed her to be great. So Aww. it's the least I can do, man. Like, she, she, gave, me, she gave me a beautiful, beautiful son. Yeah. And what, what card Aww. are we talking about? Gold card, black, black card? Who we at? Ah, black, black. Last night. Hey, hey, yo. <laughs> It's yeah, not like I mean, a black card, no? No, 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 It's the last number you play, like, pay for it be. Oh, nice one. Hey, I, got, yes. hmm. I got my baby mama a gift card. Bank card for Nice. Me. Get bank card for what? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the real, oh, you, what you are clever. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I got a gift card at this game and she had the yeah. time of her life. Oh, are you gonna give wow. Her, are you going to give her at least a few rounds after this? I did that last week because like May is the worst month of the year for me because last week Sunday was her birthday and then yeah. now it's Mother's Aww. Day. So I got to spend twice in, in, in one month. Oh, Itch. shit. I know what you mean. Yeah. Same here. Like Feb, Feb is a birthday month and also it's Valentine's Day. So yeah. I died. Oh. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Listen Shit, man. Guys. Did you guys see the Moonchild rant? Oh yeah, I, I saw. I saw it, but you know what? I still haven't listened to the full song to get the gist of 
why she's so mad because knowing knowing Moonchild, she's never she, she she's always like what's the best word? Yo, I, I never speak English Kasande. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like like Moonchild knows how to express herself with different languages. So I'm here to listen to the song and to understand why she's mad that South African radio is not playing it. And which radio station do want to play the song for her to to go on mm. social media and shout like that? Yeah. Did you see the Red Ghost Lady? No, I didn't. But I'm just like, I also saw, heard, saw something like uh, just about that there was some issues about um, Moonchild being not able to, her song basically not being played on a radio. So yeah, what happened there? So basically there's a song, I forgot the name of the song, but uh, apparently South African radio stations aren't playlisting it because they think it's too vulgar. And I've had the mm. chance to listen to the song and I've heard worse songs on radio, which baffles mm. me, you know? So that's why she took on social media. She's like, you know, there's so many songs that Bo Drake and all these guys do that get playlisted on radio. And here I am, I'm actually teaching women empowerment because she talks about, you know, how um, in the song, how if you're a BBW, you must um, appreciate it. And she glorifies, you know, women who have bigger bodies and doesn't yeah, shame yeah. them in, and you must be proud of it, you know? Mm. Uh -huh. So for a song you know, like that, yeah? No, you know what I've realized? Though? I think the market is tough on itself. You, you, especially when artists um, tell their stories in their own languages. I think the market is quick to shut down the music. But when it's an international artist, it literally lives on radio for a while. You look at Omunya Pez Go Munya, people were like, it's like, who, who's on top of who? <laughs> and that song at some point, it ended up not, it, 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 it could have not lived on radio, but you know, it was cleared out. So it's, yo, there's nothing wrong that they're talking about. Um, there's so many songs, Sister Petina. Whenever artists use their own language, languages to express themselves, like South Africa tends to, to react in a weird way, but when it's international mm. artists that say the same thing, in English, she lives on radio. So I don't know if we hate our own languages or we're hating on ourselves, but she does have a point on, on, on this issue that she's raising. Apart from language, don't you think the radio play playlisting system is a bit archaic? Ah, dog. You know, I've got to a point now where I don't like when I raise my voice when it comes to music, even with the station I'm with right now. Like, I just let them do what they do. I, I use my editorial power with the Africa Boom Mouse. This is a segment I have when it comes to African music. So I just focus on what I have and literally the music that's on the playlist. Um, I play it on my show and, you know, if it's dope, it's dope. When yeah, we just keep it moving. Because they're fine, I mean, like, you raise your voice sometimes, nothing ever happens, you know, because the station has its own mandate. So just, just keep it moving. And, and that's my thing, you know, with radio, I think like sometimes it's so out of touch with what's going on in reality, such things happen, you know? That's why these things come up. Because if they were in touch with reality, a song like the one Moonchild is talking about wouldn't be deemed offensive at all. Actually, to me, it's mild compared to all the other stuff that's out there. Even the stuff that you guys play in your mixes on weekends, I mean, there's songs <laughs> where there's a lot of swearing you know, and, and, and people get away with the mix. Mm. But you know what? That's what stations are using these days. Like the, the prime playlist, the playlist that you hear on the Breakfast Show all the way to Drive and even the shows that follow Drive are the songs that the station deems hot. And then you hear the mixes playing the role of um, uh, being in touch with what's happening on the ground. So, for example, on Y, it'll be your YTKOs. Metro will also have their own mixes and the whole Saturday lineup or Sunday lineup where you listen to it, it's curated by the DJs that are consistently in clubs. Same on Five, you know, the Cosmos and their own, you know, uh, shows uh, that that cater to to keep the station uh, in touch with what's happening on the ground. But the prime the prime playlist, ah boy, with that I always say just let just let the music managers do what they do and you know, you just keep it moving. Because get fine, up, boy. There's nothing you can do or say that will change whatever mandate they're trying to, to follow or what, whatever they, they're trying to execute uh, with the station. That's just literally where we are right now. But that's what I'm saying. I think the policy needs to move in mm. the times, dog. There's no need for a music yeah. manager. You got Shazam. It tells you the top 500 songs that people are listening to. So if you're a station for the people, take all those songs. They listen to them anyway and put them on the radio. Simple. No need for music. In fact, in nah, fact, but the I thing is like, ask, yeah. Hmm. 
sorry guys i just want to ask yes. uh, from your point of view um dj seb is that is it the management that just decides this alone or do they seek for is it like for the community to say okay no we approve this song or not or is it just literally the five people sitting in the boardroom Look, I like to believe every station has its own music committee, you know, like people that are on, uh, in touch on which, which music is trending, what songs need to be on the playlist, and that's how those songs end up being on the playlist. Hence, you have your high rotation songs and your core and all those levels that play um, to have songs playlisted a specific way. So I like to believe all stations uh, have a music committee and mixes and all these specialist shows uh, coming to play to offer music that is not within the playlist so you can hear a sense of variety. But, you know, the, the, mm. market, the, the market that YFM will cater for is not the same market that Five will cater for and the same market that 947 caters for, but there's a similarity in sound with some of the songs that we play. Like, you know, on our station, okay. you, like there's certain songs you never hear, like, you know, especially with rock or alternative music, but that, that's what Mix FM will play. That's what 947 will, you know, will play maybe on an Andy's show, uh, but you wouldn't mm. hear that on a Kutu's show. So as much as we, we, we're targeting similar markets, at the same time, they're not similar to a certain degree with their musical taste. So that's, that's, that's where the, the uniqueness comes in. Um, but I'd like to believe every radio station, you know, has a music team that seeks mm. to deliver the sound that the station is going for. I'm just okay. mad because none of these stations playlist my music, so I'm Team Moonchild. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's really tough when it comes to playlisting because I also dropped Terra last year. Why I never played the song? You lie! And you're doing drive time on Wow, that's yeah. crazy! <laughs> I swear, you know? So like never, it's, ever. Nah, they never played Tower. Tower's played, uh, you know, during mixes, uh, you know, with some DJs, wow. uh, you know. So you get to a point where you just generally don't get mad. It means that the song didn't cater for what YFM wants, and the other stations show you love, and, you know, stations in different parts of the world show you love. So you literally just keep it moving, you know. You drop music. If they find it, it's dope enough for their market, they'll put it on the playlist. If not, you literally keep it moving. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I am now as an artist. And also, I feel like with all artists that drop music, man, like, you know, sample for radio, because radio is very important, especially in an African and South African context, if you want a gig and you want people to know your music this side, obviously, because this is home. But stations outside, man, they really want to know what's popping in, in Africa. You know, just, mm. just sample the music there also. You know, that's why you, you see artists ending up touring the Europe's of this world, Asia, and all these kind of places, because... They, they're getting more, more love on those stations. More love, and they become more yeah. popular. There. Yes, because mm. the sound is foreign. They like it. Yeah. Mm. All right, speaking about music, uh, I know Seb is going to like this topic because he's a big fan of <laughs> hip-hop. Uh, what did you think about Tekashi 6 9 coming back with fire, with a bang? Woo! With a fucking Bro. bang! <laughs> Bro, two million freaking streams. Yo, 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 yo. In like 15 minutes or 10 minutes. That's just insane. Oh. The boy, the boy did two million, if not a million, view in an hour on YouTube when he dropped mm. that music video. No, no, no. Instagram mm. Live, it was two million views, and then yes. in an hour on YouTube, it was thirty million views. Thirty, yeah, oh, about thirty-five even. Yes, Ooh. yes, guys. You know, but the the boy is is an online star, and there were no man. bums He's in sight. <laughs> 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 Well, yeah. <laughs> Yo, man, Takashi is one of those guys. No, He's one of those guys. And and to he, put it into perspective, what was the the record before him? Before he hit two million live on IG live, what was it before the record? Shit, man, that was Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez had the biggest record. No, about five hundred, six hundred. Yeah, somewhere there. Yeah, Tory Lanez at the highest. Um, yeah. and then, but at the same time, when you Man, the baby face and yeah, that was uh, six hundred, seven hundred, somewhere there. Yeah, that was also like uh, quite a quite a crazy number. But Tory Lanez had the highest, and then Takashi came through and said those numbers are basic. Yeah. How about the Andrea Bocelli um, nah, concert? They didn't nah. also reach. It nah. wasn't higher that one. Small stuff. Small yeah. stuff. Small stuff. Small small. Ghost Lady, do you know who Takashi Six Nine is? <laughs> I do. I do. 
I followed the guy. <laughs> and what did... now when after he came out of prison and they were like, you know what, his career is over. And just look at the comeback. Yeah. So that's why I applaud him. What's your take on this whole snitching rat stuff? Like, are you still team Takashi even though he's a snitch? Look, when, when he went on, on, on the video and he gave reasons why he did what he did, mm. I think... I think for survival, man, like, I do understand uh, condoning snitching. Nah, I, I don't condone snitching. But if you got to save your life, like... What do you mean, Seth? Are you from the projects? <laughs> no, Doc, I'm not from the projects. You know what I mean? But when he puts it like dudes were, were doing things with his baby mama, like if, if a dude had done something and he was doing things behind my back or he was supposedly my friend... No, no, that, 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 that I understand. I'm talking about, yes. okay, <laughs> snitching for me, uh, I started hearing that word because we consume so much American pop culture. Mm. So when you bring yeah. it back to SA, what the fuck is snitching? What is that about? What is that? Where does it come from? Where does that street code come from? Mm. Yeah, it's a tell on each other. Is that, is that it? But that's yeah. what we used to do. That's what we if used to do. Yeah. I think in SA, if you're a snitch, it's not as bad as if you're a snitch in America. I could be wrong. I'd like to believe that. But remember, remember, um, in American culture, gang culture, it basically, it's just, it's, it's, it's so big. So it's almost, there's always that rule that if you get caught, you don't tell on the others. Whereas I think this side is like, we just hustle your every man for themselves. We are one. I think that's mm. the motto of this side. Whereas that side, it's like, you know, snitches get stitches. That's exactly, you, you know, know what I mean? And that's why I'm asking, like, we consume so much American pop culture, né? but then when do we get to a point where we're like, all right, cool, we're not going to consume this because it doesn't work for us? Mm. Like, I think it's because, yeah, we don't understand where these things come from. We just take it and we run with it the same way with nigger, you know? Yeah. Um, we just use the word where we can, but if an American person heard me use the word, they might feel some type of way. You know, and 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 who ghost mm -hmm. lady said it properly. Like snitching is something that comes within the uh, the the crime culture. You know what I mean? Like if you did something wrong and you saw what happened, you don't tell. Same in the hood. If you saw what's happening and who's doing it, you don't tell. It's not your place. Suppose you know. So and even in SA, it's like that. Even in SA, it's like that. It is like no. that because oh. I think it is like that because I grew up in. So Chup Chup didn't snitch. Jump Jump was just high and did an excellent all by himself. <laughs> but I think it's also a culture in South Africa, man. Like I don't think people tell. And and probably that's why our communities are in the state that they're in where, you know, in my township, for example, we knew what the neighbors were doing, stealing cars and all that kind of shit, but no one ever told. Uh, mm. on the fact that they're doing all the things they're doing because we would see them but no one would document it so we'll just keep it moving you know and I mean? then if you I did tell what was going to happen were you going to be labeled a snitch like Takashi as a rat yeah and they take care of mm. you you know what I mean or they kill your family fuck mm. yeah it's a real thing because yeah. and, and when you when you move into the burbs the neighborhood watch is a cool thing mm. you know what I mean the, a group of oh. snitches together <laughs> <laughs> Suburban snitches. <laughs> uh, speaking yeah. of IG Live, did you guys watch Jill Scott and Erica Badu? <laughs> Yo, man, I oh, missed that they one. They were so beautiful. You missed the I... savvy. Mm. And everyone's talking about it, dog. King, were you yeah, busy making another was... baby or something? Nah, dog. Yesterday okay. I was just doing a run. We were just doing a run on Netflix with my girl. We literally slept like a two. We literally watching movies, all these things that we, you know, we've been hearing about, but we haven't had the time to watch. So we've literally been just watching, 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 and I missed out on that Jill Scott one. But I'm going to check it out. I know it's on YouTube. And what did you think, yeah, Lady? Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I, 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 honestly, I cannot even say, no, someone won or the other one. No, they are just two both amazing women. I, I can't. I can't. I love it. Yeah, them. man. It was amazing. And for me, I don't know, maybe you got the same vibe, but Erica Badu looks like she's got the Sangoma vibes, man. She looks like a Sangoma. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get those vibes watching it? You, you know, she lives in her head. She's, she's, oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's there. <laughs> and what was amazing she's for high me. She's on her own spirits. 
what was amazing for me was where all the celebrities watching the live it was insane like michelle obama was in there i kept looking at every celebrity that joined i'm like fucking hell this person's watching this with me at yeah. the same time it's crazy right yeah but that's what the, i think they've created with this battle culture is that it's it's artists that are able to put worlds together and and take us all in them a nostalgic moment but one thing i'm picking up from the comments that came through with the jill scott and uh and what's her name again erica badu, erica badu yeah. yeah yeah it was it was more conversational and and sharing moments through music it was a healing moment mm. for some uh mm. it was it was a moment to reconnect for some so that was quite dope i, I i'm, I'm yeah. quite sad i miss it but i watch it for cars yeah, I think it's the best one yet that I've seen. Yeah. Also, I like the 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 Malum Kukat and Ricky Rick. Oh, I saw that the other day. That was dope, man. Yeah, Ricky didn't play like he started heavy on that. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, oh. God. Shit. No foreplay, just slam, bam, you know? That was dope. <laughs> but I think well, the dopest one we've had. Yeah, 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 of late. That one is fire. But the nasty and empty one for me, mm. like 15 rounds like the boys both have insane catalogs and no one was willing to lose if there was ever a loser in that battle um everyone just showcased some music it's just that certain songs banged in the other songs and uh nasty came out a winner yeah but that have, was a song have you been doing uh the whole instagram live like everybody's been doing lately Oh yeah, I am. I am. So I'm doing, um, so look, you've been in the business. One thing I've realized that a lot of kids, no one is ever listening to the music and everyone is doing live feeds to supposedly inspire these kids. So how do you inspire someone you've never heard or seen their work? So that's where I decided to connect the, the dots. So Mondays and Thursday, I have a live stream. I post you at 100 uh, at nine o'clock. Mm. Kids come through online. They play their songs. I tell them what they think. Oh, and yeah, I remember you told me about it. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. One kid has Ooh. landed a potential recording deal with Universal from that. You lost. Wow. So, yeah. yeah, there's one kid from Mpumalang is based in the Val. I'm going to be hosting a song. Um, we're dropping that actually now in May. Uh, Will wife and playlist it? Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Um, there's another kid from Esoweto who got a free music video from OB Media. Uh, so it's it's creating a platform of all these young creatives coming together, especially uh -huh. music. We listen to their music, we give them feedback, we tell them what I tell them what's dope, I tell them what's not dope about the song. One thing I never do though is say that their music is whack because I feel like everyone needs a helping hand every now and then. If you don't have anyone, yeah. that's giving you and also mu hand. music is subjective. Like it might be whack to you, it might be good. That's to true. Me. Yeah, 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 that is so true, man. So. It's a platform that's taken off, and, and I think it's because generally people that make music don't have people that tell them what is supposedly required to make it commercial. Um, and that's what's happening with, you know, with Keeping It 100, uh, you know, where young people are generally appreciating that moment. Because now I have engineers and producers that are watching the live feed and offering their skills to mix and master these songs at no cost or, or offering lower rates. So it's now another job opportunity platform for musicians to come together and actually, you know. Yeah, man, and, it's and pretty much. Change vibes, yeah. It's pretty much what I want to do, man. I want to start a new podcast, but it's, it's like a proper podcast, no YouTube vibes. <laughs> mm. Yeah. What should be, what's wrong with YouTube, man? <laughs> it's a lot of work, dog. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> No, no, I, I can't put the show up on YouTube because of copyright issues. So what I want to do oh, is yeah. that it's solely going to live on the podcast platform. So on iTunes. Spotify. Oh. So I'm just going to do a show where chillers can submit music. And then like once a week, I'll just do a show where I just play that music. And, you know, nice. whoever likes it, whoever wants to listen, it'll be out there, you know. Because what, mm. what I've noticed mm. is as an artist, all you ever need is just a plug. Yes. Everybody has music. Sabi, you've done music, I've done music, and all you need is mm. just a plug, just a yeah. push in the right direction, and who knows, you know, you might be the next Casper or AKA or Nest, mm. just from that plug, so, yeah. And it doesn't take a lot for you to explode in this game, you, you know, it's, it takes for that one song to be heard by the right person, and then you take mm. it. And then, by the way, Ghost Lady is an aspiring rapper, so maybe you might feature in your next song. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> She, she's oh, a little surprised wow. about that one. <laughs> uh, did you guys Are watch? You not surprised? 
Luke, before you before you get to the next topic, what do you guys think about Show My Josie saying it'll be dope to see the same way we had Jill Scott and Eric Abadu, uh, mm-hmm. Tandy Somaswai and Simpiwe Dunn? Ooh, ooh, fire. 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 Yeah. 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 Shit. Yeah. What about Zonke? Zonke? Would you put Zonke in that tier? Yes. Yes. Zonke. But I think Zonke and Lira probably. Mm. And Lira. Perth, yes. Yeah. Zonke and Lira for me, like they, they've been able to create these, these insane careers, you know, singing in, in their home languages, singing in English, mm. doing shows, you know, and, and they're very successful, you know, both of them in their yeah, own right. Yeah. But I think what makes Pure Dana and, and Tandy so, so special, it's, it's, it's so rich, it's so authentic, it's, eh. would all Ooh. be... In a, in a trance when we listen to, to both of them. Yeah, show, show that's the, I'm actually yeah. just mesmerized already. Mm. And then what mm. about a verse for Shuma Josie? Who can she go up against? Papa Penny? Hi. Moonchild. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Moonchild. Probably. But you know what I think about Shuma Josie? She, she literally wants to be she wants to be respected in Lipopo. If she can get that credit, uh, like the greats, and she's considered a great in Lipopo, then she's happy. I know that's one thing she's really gunning for. That's yeah. that OG sh- dope shit level status in Lipopo. Uh, so the next topic I want to talk about is uh, Zooming with the Zoomers. I'll be honest, I haven't seen it, but everybody's been talking about it, so I thought we should chat about it. Oh, ooh. Uh, Jacob Zuma's son in his head. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm Sholos. Now my thing is that when I started this YouTube thing, everybody was laughing at me. Now the yeah. president, yeah. now the president's <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Ex president. <laughs> I think, I think it's dope though. I think it's dope to. It's, Have you seen I, I think it? It's first of all. No, I haven't. But I remember seeing uh, the headline that this is what they're going to be doing uh, via Zoom. And I think it's just conversations that they have over the phone or have over a dinner table when they see each other. Now they're putting it online, you know, which is dope, which is dope. Because everyone wants to hear those Jacob stories, bro. I think that Hoodman has so many stories, dope. He should open a YouTube channel, dude. He's got story times for days. Yo, 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 yo. So, yeah, actually, you have to check that one out. Have you seen it, uh, Ghost Lady? Is Ghost Lady there? She's gone ghost on us. Ghost Lady! Oh, I wonder what's nah. happening with her. But she'll probably jump back on. Yeah, 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 yeah. She'll jump back on. Yeah, yeah but I'm but saying, I'm, I'm saying when I saw that, I was like, wow, man, this YouTube or this online thing is, is gaining momentum. Like, this shit is crazy. Who would have thunk, dog? But we, it's getting to that point, dog. And I think all these traditional media houses need to find means and ways to, to switch up their game or they're going to suffer. Mm-hmm. They're really going to suffer. Like, you can't be a TV channel and have a show that has 9,000 people watching and be excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, you know? And, and you have kids on YouTube that are pulling, like, views, viewers of 500,000, 100,000. It generally yeah. doesn't add up, you know? Uh, Dude, what's your, what's your working relationship like with Ambitious? No, nah, I don't have any relationship with Ambitious. So, nah. when you need to do an, uh, an interview with one of the artists, like, who do you hit up? Shit, when was the last time I interviewed anyone from Ambitious? Besides Black Diamond. Uh, shit. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, actually. Because I used to liaise with a lady by the name of Khadi when she used to be at Ambitious, and then she left. Um, oh, Khadi Ness, ne? Yeah, Khadi Ness. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so how do you used to handle things? And when she left, most of us that used to interact with her for ambitious artists, I think we, no one, no one ever did a follow up or reintroduce themselves to say, "Hey, I've taken over this role as PR. This is what I do, and what's up?" You know. Hence, I don't think a lot of ambitious artists are getting like a whole lot of publicity because most of us don't even know them, unless you take the time of day to check out ambitious YouTube, check out their website to see what's going on there. But, Besides La Sauce and Black Diamonds, Java, Miss Prue, you forgot who else. Oh, Kid Tini. I don't know who else I can mention. Yeah. There's another kid who's also dope there. I forgot his name. The reason why I'm asking, because I'd love to know who's running their social media handle, on Twitter especially. 
Um, oh, that kid is killing it, whoever it is. They're yeah, killing MT. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they've become trolls, dog. They've become trolls, bro. <laughs> the other day, they were having a stab at El Tito. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because, because El Tito decided to promo uh, MT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's sad, though. It's sad what's happening. You know, the, the sad reality is that these labels came through at a time where we, we needed, you know, black labels to come in in the forefront and, and, and switch up the game. And they did switch up the game, you know, with Mabalos and the cut, but they just didn't run long with positive news. We started hearing all these stories and all that kind of shit, you know? They kind of like made you feel like that the problem, where's the problem? Is the problem with us as black people? Uh, is it because we just don't know how to handle or treat each other? Or there's another layer to it that we actually need to talk about because ambitious, yo man, you can't, you can't ignore the impact they had when they started that, that catalog mm -hmm. with A. Reese, um, MT, yeah. Yeah. Fifi Cooper, Java, yeah. Yeah. Saudi. That Can was insane. That, can you stop with the lighter thing? I can hear it. Sorry, man. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. yeah, no stress. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, like, they, they came through with impact and they had room to literally, like, keep the momentum going on by just pay people, do what you need to do right, and take your cut if that's what is needed. It's just that we never know what happens in these boardrooms. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. So, ma what is uh, Kalawa Jasmine doing right? Ooh. How have they stayed? Yeah, I think I think Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. I think what Oscar probably has now will prove that side is Ubuntu, man. You know, and also they're doing it for the right reasons, you know. Because mm. okay. when you think about it, in the in the past ten years, like I haven't heard of a Galawa artist that has come out and said Oscar did me wrong or that's true. You know, but when you look at the history of Triple Nine, you look at you know now ambitious. You look at. Uh, 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 even even motherland, if we put in them into this conversation, like as much as they've been around for dark years, that there's always just been these scandals that have always been part of these labels. But uh, Oscar, mm. Brand, like they've been clean from what we know as as fans of the music. Like I've never heard of an artist saying Oscar did me wrong. Yeah, yeah. And why do people want to have a label, man? Like, what's do you even make money from having a label these days? What's the yeah, fascination? Labels, I think it's just having a team of people, you know, being able to take your music to, to people you don't have access to. Labels have access. Uh, labels are able to, you know, elevate your career uh, faster. A apart from like a universal Sony who make a shitload of money, um, mm -hmm. how do labels make money? They do also get, uh, I think they do get a cut of your of your check if you get a 360 deal so if you get a 360 deal from a recording label then they will get their money through shows they get money through your publishing publishing is very important they'll get your, their money through synchronization deals there's all these other avenues they streaming so they will invest so much money in you but all these other avenues that they are able to get money out of you they'll get money back you know so but if you get like a yeah so they're basically like a business loan hmm. That's why when artists sign with a recording label, they'll give you an advance. So say yes, 250,000 rand, it's your advance. Mm. Um, some artists will get probably like half a bar to, to finish the album. So they'll give you half a million to shoot a music video. Album. Yeah. Yeah, do all those things. And then they'll get their money back when the project drops. And whatever mm. you, you don't use, you can keep, but they're definitely going to get their money back. So it's, it's up to how artists want to work. Like, like some artists decide to go for licensing deals. Uh, where they can share costs with the label, that kind of vibe, you know. So it's up to you also as an artist. I think artists just need to educate themselves on different types of contracts that are out there. You want a distribution, you want a, a licensing deal, you want a full recording deal, 360. 360 is very dangerous, but for some artists it does work. I think we need a, a label for podcasts, man. We could do with half a bar. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you got a half a bar, what would you do? Ah, uh, fuck, I'd get a studio. Yeah. Uh, get better equipment and yeah. spend a lot of money on advertising. Because you got to understand, yeah. 
the, the numbers that we have right now are just organic. Like we've never done any uh, heavy marketing like on social media and stuff. Mm. Mm. So, so I think, yeah, Shit, that's, a, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of people want the money, but they don't know what to do. It. No, 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 I know. There's a lot of things I'm working on behind the scenes that require a lot of money to take the podcast to the next level. I just can't mm. think top of my head because there's so many. Like, for example, now uh, we're working on an app, um, you know, but we need, um, so we've done the back end of the app but we need a guy to do the front end of the app, you know, like the look and feel the design. Mm. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know, so there's a lot of shit that we're working on behind the scenes. But the other that, great thing is, with the internet, you surprised. To... she's like, is this us? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing I love about the internet is that you share your idea or you share what you're trying to get across and people are always willing to come together and assist yeah. you. And, and then you can just cover the hard costs. Um, Cause I don't believe in free stuff, you know, like if someone is willing to give you a service and you can give them the little bit of money that you had saved because you thought that's what it was worth, then go for it. Yeah. You know, then but my, my, my biggest brainchild was to take the, the podcast and tour before lockdown um like to take it around the country mm. and do tours you know like how they do comedy tours yeah but a podcast too that was my the one thing that i wanted to do which requires funds you know because mm. you gotta book up venues in whatever province and and and, and stuff like that but yeah that that would have been dope man fuck i mean uh, like you know without overthinking the idea it, it's literally just you just need someone to give you a card man and to get someone to give you i'm going to think of brands that are active online shell is very active online engine is very active online so if you find out who's a social media what what or marketing what what they'll give you fuel you mm. know what i mean you get a brand to give you a car mm. they'll give you a car now you're covered now you just need someone to give you a hotel there mm. you go you're done and then hey, you can host it where have you been all my life man <laughs> ah man we've had this conversation the, the thing is that the thing with, with several people is they don't realize that it's hard to get money from brands, but it's easy to get product. Mm. It's easy for a brand to, mm. it's easy for a brand to give you stock if you're going to give them exposure. So for example, a shell or an engine, if they're going to give you gas, it's what they have. So all mm. they need to do is give you a voucher. They give you a voucher. Mm. Here's 10 K to load up your entire tour. And then you go to a Mitsubishi. People also also love going to these big known brands. Like there's the Mitsubishi's there, there's the there's the Kia's that are doing some dope stuff. You go for those people, you show them your insane numbers. There's so many young people watching this, they want to buy a car, but generally they don't know which car to go for. Here you are as Mac G, you know, Suzuki is pushing the, the new uh, press right now, rolling around in a car, hitting all these places on tour with your team. Man, what's what is three rooms to a brand like Protea, man? Like for your team to sleep in those rooms, you know what I mean? And then you hit Protea hotels in all the different parts of the country. The only thing you need to do is drive. That's it. And I can drive, bro. I can drive, yeah. You see? And you don't spend a cent, my nigga. Telcom can give you Wi-Fi. Hey, Ghost Lady, are you hearing all of this? I'm hearing all of this. Mm. Bro, me, that's how, that's how I work, dog. Like if, if brands can give me products, to to execute my ideas, I go for it. The money will follow. Mm. The money will follow, man. Like it's just about how can I how can I get the idea to live? How can I get the idea to to move? Because if you're gonna wait for money, the idea mm. will never happen. Yeah, never happen. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just go, just go, just go. So we can't wait go. for the half bar. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's 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 like when you I don't know if you 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 read the story about Joe Biden talking about uh, the first big offer he got. I think it was two was ten million dollars when they wanted to buy his podcast. Yo, and he oh said no. yes, yeah, and he said no. Mm-hmm. I know but that story. Like, yeah, they op- they offered him ten million dollars to to buy one of his podcasts. He said no, because now these people are going to be controlling me. I've never mm-hmm. had ten million dollars in my account. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to have it and then what? Mm, and then what, yeah. And then what? So you as my G, someone gives you that half a part, but now you don't have the room to say, I want Ghost Lady. I want Sabine. Mm. I still 
no, you must have so and so. You must have ah dog. Must post every day. Ah dog. <laughs> and for a nigga like you who doesn't tweet, it'll kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will fire myself for a change. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They'll be like, you, you, can't, you can't have a Sebi drinking. What is he drinking? Nah, fuck it. No. Nah, dog. Nah. You know? But enjoy your, enjoy your freedom right now while you have it because you, you enjoy what you do. Yeah. So once you have these brands, man, giving you money, your money, they'll control, bro. They'll say you can't wear your own T-shirt. You need to wear a sponsored T-shirt. You know? Your headphones mm. need to be sponsored. There's just so much, man. And the people that suffer the most is your, 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 your loyal fans or your viewers or your listeners. Yeah. But also, you know what they, they probably won't pick up is the fact that you've changed. You now sense it, but they don't realize how the set will look nice, the studio will look great, everything will be amazing. Yeah, the but sound. it comes at a cost, yeah. You see? Yeah. Now you now you employed in your own company. That, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Back to square one. <laughs> You know, that's I quit. That's <laughs> and you and then and then employment. I am <laughs> not in the same WhatsApp group. <laughs> and then you they hire right, another guy to. They'll say pod, podcast and chill with Adrian. It's <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you're right. Pop cast and cheap. <laughs> My cheap. Like, trust me, like, when I started seeing ads in your stuff, I'm like, this is great. This is growth. Like, mm. and, I, and I read the comments. I remember when, on my, when I watched my episode and I read the comments, people support your vision because when they see the ad, they get excited. We're going somewhere. It's, yeah. cool that much, you know? yeah. it's dope. Yeah. It's, it's the moment for me as a viewer. It's a moment for you. Uh, and everyone is just like, also, for example, on your platforms or all the guys I know, I never skip the ads. Like, let the ad run so I know you get your money in. Mm. You, you, you have that thing top of mind that, yo, I'm going to support my Tata DJ said, you stick your head, Chila. Chila economics. <laughs> you know? Because I know, as, as someone on YouTube, man, like, you, you, you have a video with so many views and you check the numbers, people are skipping ads. You're like, oh, come on, guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But for me, if, 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 if what you're doing on YouTube is to make money, then YouTube is the last platform you should be on because you're not going to make any money. For me, YouTube is like a, a great, it's a billboard. It's a great way to advertise whatever services that you have. But if you, mm. if you bring it to make money, ah, forget you. Of course. Hey, my nigga, I'd argue that there's a kid, there's this kid I, I, I was interviewing. He, he's an international based in the US, no, based in the UK. His name is KSI. You must look him up. KSI Yeah, but we're in is... SA. I, I, I know exactly where you're going, yeah. but we're in SA, though. We're in SA. Oh, okay. You know, don't forget I that. get you. Yeah. I get you. But how are, how are these other kids making this money? Like, who's this, this, this American kid, but this South African? Um, oh, man, I forget these kids' names. They are making some money. It's just a matter of how. Well, all it takes is one video to go viral. For example, there's a girl from, my girl was telling me about it the other day. There's a girl from Nigeria. She does like a lot of skits and stuff. And then she started popping in social media. Now she's big in America. Like even the Kardashians mm -hmm. follow her content and stuff. So oh, she's made her. it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. She's yes. out of here. She's gone, you know? So all yeah. it takes is <laughs> one video to go viral, like in the right space, like in America. And then you're gone. Mm -hmm. But you know what sucks is that we have to be approved based on what you just told me. We have to be approved overseas, then at home. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. That's the problem. Because yeah. it means we've got a problem with us. Like, yeah. why must my G be approved by yeah. Trevor Noah overseas when all of us here in South Africa can watch your video? Uh, if we can, if if a South African video can have four million views or one million views, what's stopping your video to have one million views or half a million? Hmm, that's true. Shit. You know, that's and true. you that's true. and you make enough. You make enough, though. I thought we were enough. gonna. I thought we were gonna come here talk some shit. You are making me think hard, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's a Sunday. Sundays are my reflection days. <laughs> <laughs> shit, 
All right, in closing, um, I want to play a game. It's called Whose Mother Is It Anyway? Since it's Mother's Day, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put up pictures of mothers, famous mothers, and you must tell me whose um, mother this is, the celebrity. All right. All right. You ready, cool. Ghost? Are you ready, I'm Ghost? ready. I'm ready. Okay, let me share the screen. Tell me if you can see my screen. Okay, here we go. Here's the first mother. This one is very simple. Mary Twala. Ah, uh, that's not... Tom Gaga. Yeah, that's the OG, man. The OG, yeah. man. I've yeah, never met her. Have you met her? In, pass, uh, in passing, like, I never had an opportunity to actually shake her hand, but I've seen her. I've been in the same space as her. I've yeah. seen on Samizi's uh, uh, um, reality show, she looks like such a good soul, man. Mm, yeah, oh, she's, yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. All right, here we go. This is, who's this now? Uh, Cynthia. Ah. Ah. Uh, that's not Nonchez mom. Nonchez mom, yeah. Uh, another OG, man. Nonchez mom. Yes, you guys are correct. Mm. And here's another one. This is, uh, let me check who this Entries is. mom. Oh. Entries mom. Bongin yes. Son. Yes, that's Entries yes. mom. Yes, Yeah, yeah you guys are right. Valentine's mom. And the last one. How? You? Kumuto Mwekeiti. Oh, she's a radio DJ. That's, uh, that's, she's now Mrs. Langer now. Yeah. Dineo uh, Mwekeiti. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's a radio joke. Yeah. Her mom looks young. Oh. She even looks like a little sister, even. Anyway, Wish guys, thank you. Wish I had Mother's Day from the podcast team. Yeah, I, I, I called her this morning and I was like, happy birthday. And then I was like, no, 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 sorry, happy Mother's Day. She didn't tell the difference. She didn't know. She didn't know. <laughs> Kept it moving. <laughs> <laughs> Is your son still with her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's having such a oh, great time with him. Uh, she called me the other day. She's occupied. That's why. She called me the other day. She said, "Ah, you know what? Your son is going to be a musician. He makes music from the fridge, out of nowhere. He just makes music." Wow. Oh. I'm like not another just like rapper. That. <laughs> <laughs> so I say that myself, also, bro. I'm like, oh, fuck it. I have a DJ in my hands. <laughs> like heal someone, man. Do something. <laughs> And at this rate, by the time you want to DJ, they'll still be locked down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't make a career. Ah, <laughs> uh, what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are always going in at us. Yeah. <laughs> no, Harry, Harry. Nah, it's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good. All right, cool, man. Guys, thank you so much. Sabi, thanks for your time, man. Thanks for joining us on the show today, man. It was such a pleasure, bro. I oh, mean, this is dope. You know, let's do it during the week. Sundays are perfection days. I can get deep out of nowhere. Yeah. No, but we like you yeah. when you're deep, bro. We like yeah. you. you, know, no, you is, this gonna be, is this going to be common? Because I'd love to do this again. Oh, it's up to Mekji. Mekji's a tender. Mekji make the only one that's made me a co-host in my life. So, go for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd really love to do this again. Uh, just in closing, what do you want to say? Because I know by the time this comes out, uh, you would have been doing your show already. Oh, yeah, man. Please, just shout out one time to my G. Shout out uh, to, to everyone, man. It's always showing me love whenever you have me on. Um, mm. it's the, uh, I'm on the radio, Monday to Friday, 3 to 7 o'clock. It's the only tribe show that matters. And, yeah, man, if you've never heard me before, give us a shot. Um, we are five. We are five. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Shabby. Shabby, sorry, Sabi. Sabi. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a punchline. That was no mistake. He did it on purpose. <laughs> oh. I <laughs> uh, love you long time, bro. We'll chat soon. Easy, right. man. Right. Love long time. Thank you, Sabi. Bye, bye. Bye, girls, and lady. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that was amazing. Oh, that, was that was so nice. All right, Ghost it's just you and I. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, thank you. You know, I got scared at the beginning because I had a meeting on Zoom with my um, for my work. So yeah. I almost logged into a Zoom meeting as Ghost Lady. Imagine for work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yo, I 
was like, yo, <laughs> I had to like look out fast and change. <laughs> that would have been so funny, man. Yeah, it would have been so weird. Like, whoa, okay. <laughs> All right, a couple of right. Uh, announcements I got to make. Oh, yeah, make sure you join and become a member. Big shout out to everybody that's become a member. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll read out everybody that's become a member next week. Because I didn't give you the names today, Ghost Lady Askies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Alrighty. yeah, make sure you join, become a member. Also, check out our brand new website, man. www.thisismagg.com. Have you checked it out, Ghost Lady? Their website is out and running. And yes. it's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And if you're wondering where Lynn is, Lynn is still part of the podcast. Don't you dare worry. He just... He oh, no. Work. Yeah. <laughs> That's all my bad. He's going <laughs> nowhere. Yes, we're recording on Sunday. We're recording on Easter Sunday today. He's got a lifetime contract <laughs> with us. <laughs> No, Len is busy Mother's Day. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, so he couldn't join us today. So that's why we reached out yeah. to Abby. Yeah. That was nice. That was very, very nice. Awesome. Let's, let us know what you think about DJ Savvy. Should we have him around when Len is not around? What do you guys think about him? Comment below and let us know. And yes, make sure you subscribe. Do comment and do like. Uh, road to 40. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ghost Lady. We're going to get there. We're like under 5,000 away. All right. Love you long time, Ghost Lady. Love you too, Mr. McG. Podcast and chill. McG, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko. This episode is brought to you by Adept Advanced Technologies. We bring the future technology to you.